Hey everyone, in this video I want to show you how you can create voice-powered AI assistants really easily. We're going to use the OpenAI real-time API along with Bubble and LLM toolkit. So I'm just going to show you an example here of what it sounds like and then we'll go through quickly building one. It'll just take a couple of minutes. So if we pick one of these voices here, say this one, it'll start a chat and then we can talk to it. Tell me something interesting about Canada. Ah, Canada. The land of maple syrup and endless apologies. Did you know that Canada has the longest coastline of any country in the world? Stretching over 202... Okay, could you actually tell me something funny about Canada? Absolutely. You know, in Canada, there's a running joke about their love for apologies. They even have a law called the Apology Act. Basically, if you say sorry after an accident, it doesn't mean you're admitting fault. It's just a polite way of saying, I'm Canadian. So if you bump into someone All on right, the street- so you get the point. So that's that. Um, we can pick other voices here. So we pick this one. Uh, we could say, tell me something about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence or AI is like the brainy sidekick in the tech world, making everything smarter and snazzier. It covers a wide- all right, so you get the point. Um, if we were to open this up, we can change the voices. So these are the defaults, uh, the names here, Alloy, Ash, Ballad, and so forth. But if we wanted to, uh, for example, get them to speak in an accent or speak in a particular dialect or respond with jokes or be extra serious, we can add those here. So for example, if I said, if I say laugh maniacally before every response, uh, let's say we start a chat with Shimmer, and say, walk me through an optimal morning routine for entrepreneurs. <laughs> Fine, if I must. First, wake up early. It's best to get a head start on world domination. Then, right, so that's that's the evil villain coming out. Um, so that's the basics of what we're going to cover. Um, so now I'm going to walk through how you can actually set one of these up. This is just one page in our Bubble app, our LLM toolkit demo um, application. Here's another page over here which walks through the setup and kind of shows you in overview what the steps are. So we'll take a look at that and then we'll actually build it. Um, it's very straightforward. So here are the instructions. Basically you put a container on your page in your bubble app and a real-time audio container. We create an ephemeral token. Um, so this is a protection, a security mechanism that allows you to not expose your API key in the browser. Um, so we do this in the back end, and then we get our token and we attach it to our session. And then we connect to our session. So um, this page here, which I'll link in the description below, um, can kind of walk you through it, but I'll show you sort of in real time what you would do. So we're here in just an empty page. We just have a header here. So the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that LLM Toolkit is installed in your app, and then you'll want to put a real-time audio container on your page. Put it anywhere. Um, that gives you a little pulsing indicator if you're talking to the AI or it's talking to you. You don't have to use it. Um, from here, you want to have a way for the user to generate an ephemeral token and then to connect to the session. So we'll do this all on the page and I'll talk about how you probably don't want to do that ultimately. Um, I'll talk about a more secure way to do this in a minute. But if we have an input here for the API key, um, and then we'll create a workflow to generate that ephemeral token. We'll say generate token. And then when we click on this button, we want to run the create real-time audio session. And the default model is all that's available right now. Um, if you, you want to select a voice, those eight voices I showed at the beginning, so any of these, lowercase. Um, if you want to set any instructions, you would do it here. And then your API key here will read from that input that we just created. So this action will return uh, a token. That's a, a short-lived token that we then use to connect to the session. So if we put that here, just to show on the page, we'll say token, we'll give a custom state to this text element call it T, um, call it token, I guess, to be a bit more explicit. So we'll say here that we want to actually display that token when it comes back. And in our workflow, when we get it back, we'll set the state of an element of that text. We'll set its token to the result of step one's um, client secret or ephemeral token. So once we have that, um, we can now connect to the session. So this creates the session but the browser's not connected to it yet. Um, so the second thing to do would be create another workflow, another button that says connect to the session. So to do that, we'll add a workflow. 
and we'll call connect to real-time audio. And then the ephemeral key will be what we just got back and set to that text element, that token. And then we have this option to either transcribe the user's input or not. Um, if you're not going to be displaying it in text, leave this off. There's a, an additional cost. OpenAI will transcribe it using Whisper, but it costs um, a little bit to do that. So depending on your use case, we'll just leave it off for now. Um, and that's basically all you need to do. So once we load this page, punch in our API key here and generate our token, then we should be able to connect to a session and talk to an AI. So let's see if this works. So we reload the page here. We'll put an API key in here that we just got from OpenAI. We'll click Generate Token. And there's the token right there. Then we click Connect to Session. And we can see our indicator up here is now pulsing. Your CR indicator is pulsing, which might mean it's actively oh, a little transmitting. Bit cut off. Can you tell me something cool about Bubble.io? Sure. Bubble.io is a pretty cool platform, especially if you're into building web applications without having to write code. It's a no code. Okay, so that's that's enough. Um, I'll close this for the moment or reload this. Um, you might also want to add um, like a disconnect button. Um, if you, for example, want to allow the user to end the chat, you should probably have a button that'll allow you to do that. You could say here, uh, disconnect from real time audio and just pick whichever container you're using. You might have more than one of these audio containers on a page. So that's all you have to do to disconnect. Now, the only other thing I'll say is if you are providing an API key, you don't want to do this generate token step on the page. You probably want to do it in a backend workflow. And the reason for that is that the user, if, he, if they know how to inspect the network traffic, they can see your API key. So the reason this ephemeral token exists at all is so that your users won't see it. So if you want to do this in a more secure way, what you should do is take the generate token action and move it off of the page and move it to a backend workflow. So we have this here. Um, on page, LLM Toolkit, create real-time audio session. I would copy this, um, although we're gonna modify it, so you don't really have to copy it, but we'll come into backend workflows and create a new one. And we're going to create an API workflow. We'll call it create ephemeral token. And depending on how you set this up, you may need a couple of other parameters. We definitely need our API key. Um, jumping in here from the future, I made a mistake when I was recording this uh, about the API key. Um, which we'll, I'll make in a minute here, but just to clarify, um, here in this workflow generate token, we're passing this API key from that input. This is not the correct pattern. The reason we're doing this is though so that that API key isn't exposed through the workflow that's going to run when this button is triggered. And if you use this input or something else on the page to um, to actually pass the API to the backend workflow, it defeats the whole purpose of having it in a backend workflow. So you'd either want to fetch this from the database or hard code it. So for example, you might in your database have um, a data type called API keys. And in your app data, you would create, for example, one of the um, one of your entries might be an OpenAI API key that you fetch, right? So you could say new entry where the service is OpenAI and the key is whatever it is, SK123. Then you would search for this um, in this workflow. This is one way you could do it, the wrong tab. You could say, um, do a search for API keys where the service equals OpenAI. And then you would take the first item and you would take its key as an example. So that's one way you could do it. Um, or if you're just going to use the same API key all the time, you could just hard code it into your workflow. But just an additional note, you would not want to do this in an option set. If you create um, in your data, if you create option sets for API keys, these will be downloaded to the user's browser. Um, you can check the bubble documentation for that. This is not the place to store sensitive credentials. Um, so you would do that in the database. So anyway, I just wanted to correct that error because as in the next couple of minutes, I'm going through setting up the API workflow with this API key field as part of the input. Um, but this actually sort of defeats the purpose of the um, separating it to the backend workflow. So apologies for that in advance. We'll set that as one parameter. Um, what I would do typically probably is have this attached to the user, but you could attach it to anything. You could have, for example, for each chat session, um, when they click start session, you create a new um, entry in the database called the chat. So we could do that. But what I'm going to do instead is attach it directly to the user. And if you do that, you want to pass the user in the API as well. So we've got the API key um, as one parameter, and we'll set the other one as a user. And so when we call this, we pass both in this action, and then we can paste our workflow here. The voice, oh, we're going to want to pass the voice as well. So we could set um, set voice here and then pass it through. But if we're not 
uh, worrying about changing the voice, I guess we don't have to set that. So we'll just leave it as shimmer. Same with the model and the instructions, if you're going to pass those through. Um, but here we'll set it to the API key. And then when we get our token back, we're going to say make changes to a thing. The thing that we're going to change is the user that we passed over. And we'll set um, in our data type for user, we have an ephemeral key field defined here as text. And so we'll set that field on the user to be the result of step one's client secret or ephemeral key. So what this will do, um, we can on our page, instead of the token here being text A's token, what we can do is say current user's ephemeral key. So now it's displaying the current user's ephemeral key. But in the workflow on the page, we want to change this. And instead of um, calling it from the page, we'll delete this and this. Um, we'll call that API workflow. We'll say schedule API workflow. Workflow will be create ephemeral token demo flow. It's the one we just created. The API key will be whatever's in that input. The user will be the current user. And then the scheduled date can just be current date time. Now note we're doing this when we click generate token, but you could do it on page load. You could do it when they open the chat tab on your, or the audio tab on your app or whatever. Um, we're just doing this manually. There's a bit of a startup time, some, the first time that you run the create token uh, workflow. So um, looking for the right time to do that in your app is a good idea. Anyway, so we'll reload this page. We'll punch the API key back in here and generate our token. And so you see it went off immediately because it's now running in a backend workflow and then it pops up here. So what you could do is have, for example, like a status that this button can't be clicked on until the user's um, ephemeral token is populated or something, not empty. And then the last thing to do is when we connect to the session, we want to use the user's um, ephemeral token rather than the one on the page here. We'll just say current user's ephemeral key. And so now we should be able to reload our page, punch in our API key here, and generate that token with the backend workflow. So it pops up here, that's good. And then we should be able to connect to a session. We'll see it here, testing one, two, three. Loud and clear, testing one, two, three. You're coming through perfectly. What's next on the agenda? All right, so that's all good. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, either leave them below or come join us on Discord. And I hope you have lots of fun building voice-powered AI assistants. Thanks and talk to you soon.